Hey there folks, Andrew Swan here, and today I'm going to look at a few issues that I've run into working with FFmpeg. More specifically, I'm going to look at a couple of color shift issues that can happen when you bring in some FFmpeg encoded files into Premiere Pro or After Effects. These are limited to a few particular codecs and container formats but they happen to be very popular codecs, such as ProRes and DNxHR. After that, I will look at an upscaling bug where standard definition video upscaled to high definition frame sizes can exhibit a color shift that is present across the board. Once again, using particular codecs and container formats. And obviously I'm going to show you how to correct for all of these issues. Now, before I begin, I should mention that one of the issues I'm going to cover is actually fixed already in recent builds of FFmpeg. So if you're stuck on an older build, this may still affect you, but it's always a good idea to try and grab the latest nightly build if possible, uh, because it's possible that the issue you're experiencing may have been fixed in newer versions. Okay. Now, this video will have a corresponding blog post up on my blog at mesalatthefront.blogspot.com. If I need to make any minor corrections or updates to this video, that will show up in the blog post rather than me making a whole separate video. So consider the blog post sort of the definitive source of information. I'm also not going to run through the full tutorial about how to set up FFmpeg today. I'm going to show you a simple setup option just on the odd chance that you're stumbling upon this without having FFmpeg installed first, uh, but I will be doing literally the simplest option possible, and this will be for Windows. If you're on Mac OS or a Linux distribution, then the way in which you install FFmpeg may differ slightly too significantly, so I'm not really going to cover that. If you'd like a tutorial about how to put FFmpeg in your system path on Windows, so you can run it from any directory on your computer without having to drop a file in there first, I will throw up in the recommended videos a tutorial that I've done on this very subject right about now. And it will also show you how to set up ABI Synth if you're interested in working with that. With all that out of the way, let's get started. So if you do not have FFmpeg already, then you can just go to ffmpeg.zerono.com slash builds, grab the latest current Windows 64-bit static linking version and download it. Uh, once it's downloaded, I generally like to virus scan all the files that I download off the internet, so you can certainly go ahead and do that. I should mention at this point that I take no responsibility for any harm that comes to you, your system or to you or whatever as a result of doing things I'm going to talk about in this tutorial. Uh, you do all these things at your own risk. If you need an alternative to FFmpeg for transcoding video files that works a bit more reliably in these particular cases, Adobe Media Encoder, Apple's Compressor, or even DaVinci Resolve all are pretty good at doing high quality transcodes. Okay, so once you've downloaded FFmpeg, Go ahead and bring up the folder where your video files are that you wish to convert. And then open up your downloads directory, open up the FFmpeg archive, open up the folder within that, and then the bin folder, and then drag over ffmpeg.exe to the directory with your video files. And there you go. That's the simple install method for FFmpeg. It will only work within this folder, but that should suffice for today. Okay. So the first issue I'm going to show you involves transcoding to ProRes. And you'll notice that I have a bunch of batch files here. 
These are a really easy way to store FFmpeg commands or long commands that have been written out for command line programs. You can double click to run them and editing them is as simple as just right clicking and clicking on edit, which will bring it up in Notepad. Uh, if you've never set up a batch file before, basically just right click somewhere in the window where you do not have a file underneath the cursor. Then go to the new option and text document, name it whatever you want, but make sure to change the three letter extension to .bat and you've just created a batch file. Uh, if you don't see three letter extensions after the text file when you create it, go ahead and go to your start menu, do folder, just type in folder, go to file explorer options, the view tab, and uncheck hide extensions for known file types and click OK. All right. Now I actually have a bunch of pre-made batch files here to sort of speed the process along. So I'm going to open up the ProRes batch file I have. And here's a pretty typical ProRes transcode command using FFmpeg. So first we start with FFmpeg, then dash I, the name of the input file in quotes, then dash C colon V, then ProRes, since that's the video codec that we'll be using, dash profile colon V3, which is short for ProRes 422HQ. So that's a way to select the subtype of ProRes. Uh, then dash C colon A, and for the audio codec, we'll be using PCM underscore S16LE, otherwise known as uncompressed PCM 16-bit audio. Then finally, the name of your output file in quotes, which in this case I'm going to call ProRes422HQ-old.mov. And the reason that I'm calling it old is because this is the bug that has been fixed in newer builds of FFmpeg. So actually in order to show off this bug, I'm gonna to have to use an older version of FFmpeg, which I already have pre-installed on my system and set to a particular command by setting up a particular directory with a batch file in my system path to an older version of FFmpeg. And the batch file is called FFmpeg32, okay? So uh, I'm happy with my command here, so I'm gonna save this, close it, and double click to run it. And I will go ahead and fast forward through this render. All right, so to see what this issue is all about, I am going to select my original video file and the ProRes transcode I just did, and go ahead and drag them on over into After Effects. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new composition using the master file and then drag in the ProRes transcode below it. Uh, I'm gonna to go to a representative frame here. Yeah, it looks pretty good in terms of framing. All right, so this is the original video file. And if you watch closely, that is the ProRes transcode, original, transcode, original, transcode. Um, for those of you watching this on a phone or some sort of crappy video monitor, there is this slight darkening slash redshift to the image. This is a pretty easy one to fix because newer builds of FFmpeg will in fact correct for this no problem. However, if you are working with an older version of FFmpeg for some reason and you see this behavior happening, then the way to fix the issue is to go back into this FFmpeg command here. And instead of using ProRes for the codec, we're going to use ProRes underscore KS, which is short for ProRes Costia. Costia supports more quality presets and supports ProRes 444 and 444XQ, whereas the standard ProRes encoder does not do any of those things. 
However, Costia is considerably slower than the standard ProRes encoder. The nice thing is it will also fix this color shift issue. So if I just change the file name so it doesn't overwrite the other one and save it, close it, and run it, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this render as well. Although if you're looking closely, you will probably notice that we are rendering at about less than half the speed of the standard ProRes encoder in FFmpeg. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and bring that into After Effects. Drop it on in. And so this is the standard ProRes encoder. This is the Costia encoder. This is the original video file. Costia, original, Costia, original. Okay, so that fixes that issue. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually remove those ProRes files so I can show you the next issue. And this is when you're using Avid's video codecs, specifically DNX HD and DNX HR. Uh, I should probably mention at this point that the video file that I'm using as a source here is in a 10-bit format already. So both ProRes and the variant of DNxHR that I'm about to show you are 10-bit native. So if you do need to transcode from an 8-bit file, you'll need to make a color space correction, and I will show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, so this issue is present in the current build of FFmpeg as of today's recording. So standard FFmpeg command, once again, we'll be using DNxHD as the codec entry, and then for the profile colon V entry, we'll be using DNxHR underscore HQX, which is the 10-bit 422 preset for DNxHR, unless you go to 4K frame size, in which case it flips over to 12-bit 422. Um, if you're coming from an 8-bit file for either this or the ProRes transcode, then you will need to do a color space conversion, which you can do with this dash pix underscore fmt yuv422p10le command. It doesn't hurt anything if you leave this up here when transcoding a 10-bit video file, but for sure, if you're coming from an 8-bit file, you require it. So then same uncompressed audio codec as before, and we're going to call this file dnxhr.mov. Okay. So I'm going to save that, close it, run it, and once again, fast forward the transcode process. All right, so let's bring in our DNxHR encode into After Effects and drop it below. This color shift is really sneaky. If you're not doing what I'm doing right here, which is straight A-B testing, you might never pick up on it. If you're having trouble seeing the difference on YouTube, go ahead and go to the blog post, which I will have linked in the video description below. And I have PNG frame grabs that will show off this a lot easier, especially because you can flip back and forth between them. And that works both on desktop web browsers and on mobile as well. All right, so this is the original video file. This is the DNxHR encode. All right, do you see the difference? Original. DNxHR. It's really odd because it's almost the opposite of the ProRes color shift. It's a slight greenish yellowish shift. And in fact, to show it more clearly, I'll go back to the original video file, zoom in a bit, 
and I think you can kind of see it a bit more clearly like this. So once again, the original, DNxHr, original, DNxHr. Yeah, subtle. <laughs> All right, so how do we fix this? Uh, pretty easy, actually. Basically, just go back into your command here, and instead of using .mov, which is the QuickTime file format container, we're going to use .mxf, which is the material exchange format container. And that'll do it. So we're going to close that, double click, launch it, and fast forward. All right, and we'll drag the MXF file over. Drop it in the composition, .mov, .mxf, .mov, .mxf, and original video file, .mxf, original video file, .mxf. So, fixes the issue. Now, um, there are some drawbacks to this fix, unfortunately. So some of the more eagle-eyed among you might have noticed that I have resolve up in the background here. I'm about to show you why that is. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring up resolve and I'm gonna drag in all of these different video files. Huh. You might have noticed something interesting already, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's put in the original video file. Then let me drop in this uh, ProRes encode. And this is the uncorrected encode from the older version of FFmpeg. This is the ProRes KS version. And this is the DNX HR encode. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with DaVinci Resolve, the way to hide and show timelines here is with this sort of motion picture frame icon. So I'm actually just going to go ahead here and hide everything except the original. I'm going to move through and go to a similar frame here. And then we're gonna start looking through each of these and see if we can spot the difference. So original video, ProRes old version, ProRes KS, DNxHR, original video. So um, you might have noticed that there is no difference between these. <laughs> and this is why I say that these two color shift bugs are present on Adobe video programs. I can verify that this is not an issue in Resolve. Also, it's not an issue in Shotcut. And I also don't see a difference in Scratch Play, which is the playback component of Assimilate Scratch. So yeah. Interesting. What's really interesting, however, is you might have noticed that we're missing one of the video files. And if we go and try and drag it in again, it does not copy over. I can confirm that FFmpeg generated MXF files will not import into DaVinci Resolve. What's weird about this is that it will absolutely import into Shotcut, but with Scratch Play, the file will import, but the video will not display. You'll only get audio. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the MXF container format was originally designed to be this kind of catch-all open source container format that would work for professional formats and kind of unify everything together. Unfortunately, there are a bunch of different implementations of it. My guess is that Resolve is expecting the particular MXF file that is encoded by Avid Media Composer or compatible encoding programs. 
but that is entirely a guess. Anyway, something to know, especially if you're considering editing in Premiere and then color grading in Resolve. All right. This next bug is not program specific, and it deals with a color shift when transcoding a standard definition video file to a high definition frame size. Now, you might have noticed that there's a bunch of different upscale batch files here. Let's start with DNxHR. Uh, if we look at the command here, you will notice that we're bringing in our mkv file in the input, and then we have an upscale command using an ffmpeg filter. Uh, filter commands are a whole crazy complicated topic that I don't fully understand, but basically, Easy way to do filters is dash VF, and then in quotes, you'll put in the filter with all the additional parameters that it needs. So in this case, I'm using the scale filter, then an equals 1280 colon 720, then colon flags equals spline. So we're upscaling to 1280 by 720, and we're setting the image resize method to spline. You can also use bicubic, bilinear, all that stuff. We're using DNxHR, so we're setting the codec to DNxHD, and we're once again setting the profile to DNxHR HQX. Because this is very definitely an 8-bit video file, we're changing the color space to 10-bit YUV422, using dash pics underscore FMT YUV 422 P10LE. And once again, we're doing 16-bit uncompressed PCM audio. And we're calling this upscale DNxHR HQX.MXF. And we're doing MXF to deal with the other color space issue that I have just covered. All right, so save that, close it, run it, and once again, I will fast forward through this encoding process. Okay, now that that's done, let's go back to After Effects, clear out all of these other video files here, and bring in our MKV file and our upscale. Okay, so since I'm going to be looking at this as a high definition upscale, I'll use the upscale as the basis for the new composition. Then drag in the original video file and do a transform fit to comp. So it will fill the frame. And let's roll around here until we get, yeah, uh, a frame with this lower third, because that is actually where you will notice the issue most in areas like this that have strong, bold primary colors. All right, so this is the upscale. This is the original. Upscale, original. Now, uh, ignoring the fact that it's ending up on a different frame, that's a totally unrelated issue, and you can just trust me when I say that FFmpeg isn't dropping frames here, but uh, because of the differences between the files, there is a frame difference when viewing this in After Effects. All right. Um, so this one is slightly trickier to fix, but thankfully by doing some Google searching, I found the answer on the FFmpeg mailing list. And uh, what you end up having to do with this is going back into your command and adding another filter onto the end, which you can do by doing a comma and then a space. And then we're going to do color matrix equals BT601 colon BT709. So what we're doing here is standard definition video files almost universally use a particular broadcast standard. 
known as BT601. High definition video files use a comparable but very slightly different standard known as BT709, otherwise known as Rec 709. And if you go online and look at charts at this, uh, the differences are so subtle that Wikipedia won't even show like a separate chart for this. It'll say like they're essentially the same thing, but they're just different enough that you will get a color shift if you do not correct for the difference between 601 and 709 when upscaling. For whatever reason, when using DNxHR and H.264 as your video codec in FFmpeg, it does not automatically correct for this difference. All right, so let's go ahead and just tack a fixed onto the end of the file name. Save it, close it, and once again, I will fast forward through the render process. Okay, so interestingly enough, you might notice that it is the same file size as the other transcode. Let's drop it in here. Okay, drop it in the timeline. And once again, this is the unfixed transcode, the original, and the fixed transcode. Unfixed, fixed, unfixed, fixed, original. Okay. So uh, if you notice that you're being affected by this color shift issue when doing an upscale, then that's how you fix it in FFmpeg. Some of you, I am sure, might ask, well, what would happen if you used AVI synth to do the upscale? Well, I, just for the heck of it, have put together a quick little script for this. And so once again, you can see we're using the standard ProRes encoder, but this is the newer version, so no color shift issues with that. Um, and I'm just going to call this upscale AVS ProRes 422HQ. All right, so let's render that. And just in case you were wondering what AVI synth settings I'm using, uh, it's basically just a simple FFmpeg source 2 to load the video file and then a spline 64 resize to 720p. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is using ProRes 422HQ. And I'm going to drop this under here. So again, this is the original video file. This is the fixed DNxHR. And this is the AVI Synth ProRes. And would you look at that? It works without a fix. <laughs> I can also confirm that using DNxHR, the problem does persist. So there you go. Uh, one sort of interesting thing, not necessarily something that you might uh, immediately notice, but I have another thing here for just a straight ProRes upscale uh, using, again, this same scale filter rather than AVI synth. If I run that and fast forward through it. Okay. So let's bring that in, drop it in, drop this on. And so this is the AVI synth upscale. This is the standard FFmpeg upscale. Okay, so take a look at the text here. This is the straight FFmpeg upscale. This is the AVI synth upscale. What's weird is check out the DNxHR and then AVI Synth ProRes. DNxHR, AVI Synth ProRes, straight ProRes. <laughs> now, this may be a, an issue with the particular video that I am using uh, because it's kind of a little bit unusual in that the DVD is actually a true 29.97 
progressive DVD, um, which is not a very common format. And it's possible that the ProRes encoder for some reason is getting confused by that and just kind of deciding that it's, it's only gonna honor half the lines of resolution in the image. But as you can see, there is definitely a quality difference between those. So if you are looking to use FFmpeg to upscale an image and then transcode it to ProRes, then you might consider using ABI Synth as an intermediary just to make sure that you're getting the best possible quality out of the upscale. All right. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you liked this video and found it helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing to my channel. If you didn't like the video or feel like I got something wrong or have some constructive criticism in general, please leave a comment below in the video. Um, if you have a big old long workflow question, go ahead and put that up on the corresponding blog post so that people who are Google searching can find that. Uh, because I do really try to answer all comments that I get. And uh, if it's something that I can help you with, I'm more than happy to do so. And aside from that, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, happy video editing.